boop, boop, boop. What's up people we are back with more of 80 days in the previous video we left off after visiting the world fair in Paris and I believe it's time to take our leave now I would soon encounter in my journey around the world oh yeah new routes discovered from Izmir to Istanbul right so uh, what what does a bank in particular do it's gonna cost us two hours, but I kinda wanna figure out. It's better to find out at the beginning than later on, I guess. We must visit the bank, Monsieur Fogg declared. Uh, a robbery, Monsieur? You can actually rob a bank? That's awesome. You have additional funds? I am a gentleman. They would extend me credit if required, he replied. But do you suppose I put my entire fortune into a carpet bag under your supervision? Uh, I did not answer. I regarded the bank as we entered. I regarded the bank as we entered. It was a string or it was a place of stone and shimmering marble floors with beautiful windows, fountains and plants. You wish to withdraw funds? We were told. I warn you, it may take some time. What? It will take too long. Oh wow. Okay, so this is interesting to know later on, of course, because we're not l running low on money either uh, anyway, but if we are getting close to the point where we're running low on money, then we can obviously get money from the bank, but it takes time, so that means that we would, for a thousand pounds, we would have to stay an extra day here in Paris, but yeah. It will take too long, I informed the manager. We swept out of the bank. Thankfully, our situation is not desperate, my master declared. Onwards! Right, you know what? We're just gonna depart. Oh, can we go to Amsterdam? That would be so awesome. Like we we can go to Munich, Nice, Vienna. But if we go to Amsterdam, we'll arrive today. Fuck yeah, let's go! Right, before 5 p.m. we'll arrive. Private car to Amsterdam. The roof's uh, car's roof was uh, has space for one suitcase. Uh, the open road. This promises to be a bothersome road. Minus 5 health. Oh, because we have 100 health here. Alright. You know what? That's fine. It's worth it for Amsterdam. Do the weed. We found a member of the Coachmakers Guild to carry us to Amsterdam. She loaded the case onto the back, stoked the boiler, and took off at high speed along the coastal road, swerving around each corner with considerable skill. And, I think, a touch of showmanship, or recklessness, or some glee at our discomfort. You know what? We're just kinda gonna call it showmanship. I clung on tight. This would be a terrific ride. Your character is now well heated. So we can wait, or we can converse, always we converse. Greetings, drivers. I cannot drive well if people are talking to me. Okay. Ask El Elaine Gerard about Amsterdam. I need to know about Amsterdam. Uh, they still grow the best tulips in Amsterdam, no question. Yeah, sure, <laughs> tulips if you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so uh, we can go, why would we go back to Cambridge though? That makes no sense. We're, we're definitely gonna go further into Europe rather than going back towards England. So either uh, we could go to Scandinavia, that would be Copenhagen, Berlin, Munich. Let's ask, ask about Berlin. Is it possible to go to, uh, from Amsterdam to Berlin? Yes, Berlin can be reached from Amsterdam by a private car, but the journey is a tiring one. Alright, and then from Berlin we could go to, uh, what is this? Saritsin, I don't even know what it is. Saritsin, no idea, but I know the quickest way to Saritsin from here is to go via Minsk. Alright, goodbye. Bam, from Amsterdam, got a new path to Berlin possible. So you, you find out new paths as well, but just by talking with people. Because obviously you don't know the map of the world yourself, right? So you just ask locals in that area or other people that are just have more knowledge about the map, world mapping in general. And that's how you learn more routes, I'm assuming, because it seems like not every route is available just right from the start. You actually have to find out about these routes just solely by in, informing from other people. Once or twice, the metal-rimmed wheels lifted the chassis clear from the road on one side, only to bump down after a chuff and puff more of the engine. We jolted around like uh, so much poultry. 
uh, we have must have topped 40 Bam, that's 40 perhaps even 50 miles an hour dang a fabulous way to travel I like speed as long as it doesn't feel like I'm going to die you know sometimes you just go so fast and like fuck it I'm gonna die but if it's like fast and you actually feel safe as well then that would be personally awesome for me but I'm actually guessing considering it doesn't look well guarded and everything like if it's actually in a car like this that's it uh, displayed on the picture then I would be a little bit scared of that but if if I were to trust the driver at least then I'll be like yeah sure I'll put my life in his hands if 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 uh, if we're gonna crash we're all gonna die right YOLO uh, fabulous way to travel the polished inventor Bozek who at first attached a perfect, uh, perfectly decent locomotive engine underneath a flimsy wooden crate was clearly a genius. Such cars were growing in popularity, uh, my good friends. If I were not destined to be a valet until the day I have grey hairs in my ears, hmm, then what? I would become a mechanic? What? No, 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 no. A car driver, yes and guide the rich and famous around the mountains of the south of France every day between the hours of 2 and 6. Does such a role exist? Perhaps I will invent it, if not. Toot toot! As we rattled along, I spoke to our driver. Um, I mean, I'm actually kind of certain that you can get in accidents, but you know what, even though she says she's not that well informed or that she actually gets distracted when we talk to her, we're just gonna keep talking to her. I spoke to our driver about what lay ahead and learned that the most efficient way to Prague is to go via Berlin. Your character is now suave. Oh yeah, you're quite the flamboyant type I see. Of course, of course, we lost 5 health for that, but we're in Amsterdam, fuck yeah! Look at this beautiful- oh no, I didn't want to zoom out. Seven players are you? Oh, you can actually ha see how many players. Bang. Can we go back? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It's 10 p.m. now. There's nothing we can do here, actually. It's the luggage, the overview, take screenshots. So we're on five health. How do we regain health, though? I think it's just simply by sleeping. So we're gonna spend the night here, we'll pass the night here. Yes, we gained 4 health. Though the people of Amsterdam move about its ca canal side streets with a sense of optimism and good cheer, I felt no pressing need to linger. Uh, one look at their building tells another story. Oh, yeah, I've been in Amsterdam many times and it's pretty nice. You know, I, take it, I probably take it for granted because it's not that I live close to it, but I live in the same country so for me personally I don't go like wow Amsterdam it's so special but it's actually you know it's a big tourist place in general so because I live in the same country I sort of take it for granted sadly I guess our own mission left little time for exchanging pleasantries no 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 we have all the time in the world to hang around in Amsterdam uh, perhaps 200 years ago this was the center of the world but these days Tulips are no longer considered more valuable than gold. The Zulu diamond fields have drawn away the trade. God damn the Zulus! Uh, the Zulu diamond fields have drawn away the trade from Europe, and the importance of Amsterdam is a little faded. I sympathize, bien sûr. Uh, Fran France's own position has been precarious since the war with Prussia. Damn Prussia, that's a long time ago. That debacle with Napoleon. That debacle with Napoleon, a par, a par, a par mal. It is a most ill-advised venture to attempt to conquer all of Europe and Russia besides. Would I walk along the Seine one day, thinking back to our days of lost glory? I approach the street peddler. There are a lot of those in Amsterdam. For advice, who greeted we, me with a cheerful smile beneath a caterpillar-like mustache. Do we really have to rub it in his face like he's a street battle? Like, We're going around the world, bitch! Suck it! What is the cheapest way out of the city? What's the fastest way on from here? Fuck it, we're gonna rub it in his face. We're going around the world! 
Ha ha ha, he replied. You are like the influenza. The peddler reached into his pocket. Buy an apple? One pound. Uh, an apple. One pound? Sure, why not? I bought it and took it with a smile. Uh, what is the cheapest way? What is the... F uh, we don't need to worry about money now. The fastest way on from here. Car, I suppose. The roads are good. The canals used to be better. But now, they seem almost out of date, he sighed. It is a curse to be rich in the past. By the time the future rolls around, you are poor again. Maybe you'll be rich again sometime. I find the rich mostly stay rich. That's it doesn't just happen that you don't suddenly become not rich anymore, that you become poor. Like, unless you don't actually do anything to try and gain at least the same amount of money that you had before, you will stay rich if you are rich. Unless you make a, a mistake, like, I don't know, investing in the wrong company or something like that, I guess. You shrugged, and I began to wonder whether the, that truism would apply to my master after our journey was done. Alright, I thanked the peddler and moved on. So many choices! All that remained was to uh, choose how best to depart. Really is that all we can choose? Like, So we can go through Copenhagen as well. It opens at 7am. Alright, we're gonna go to the market once it's 7am. Tick tock! Let's go! First there, oh yeah, uh, new market, <laughs> basically new market, created from the filling in of several canals. This is a thriving spot for trade. So a slender volume list, contact details for European carriage drivers. Large for carriages in Europe will be visible on the globe. The last Rembrandt, the sketch by Rembrandt, depicting uh, a set of oh worth seven thousand two hundred in Munich. Give me that. Give me. Give me. Give me that. Holy crap, I'm gonna sell that in Munich. I'm going to Munich right the fuck now. Does it really take so many? Right, we discovered a lot of routes from Nice to... Holy crap. Warsaw. Budapest. Sofia. Bucharest. Thessaloniki. Meteor uh, Meteora Valley. Istanbul to Antalya, Alexandria, Cairo, Suez, Marrakesh, Tangier, ooh, Lisbon, so we're P Portugal, 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 that's what it is, I think. Uh, fuck it, let's explore. It's Amsterdam after all. New routes discovered again? I took a few hours to explore, investigating the various options for how we might continue our journey. That was it? Hurry up, Passepartout! Don't drop those cases. Yeah, we got three cases. Um, let's plan. So, what was it? I want to go to Munich. I really want to go to Munich. Uh, the river barge departs from for Munich tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay. Um, yeah. I will take that one whenever it's available. So 10 a.m. tomorrow. So I'm guessing there isn't much else to do here, right? So we're gonna spend the night here and then 10 a.m. With what remained of the day, I washed and hung our linen. I spent a few hours polishing shoes in the lobbies. I engaged another guest in conversation. I engaged another guest in conversation to learn what I could. Hearing from him that you could pick up amethysts from Trosmo, 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 you can sell for profit in Helsinki. A most interesting snippet. Like the, the names of a lot of cities are very difficult, so I'm probably gonna mispronounce half of them, if not, if not more. So forgive me. Right. So 10:30. Um, I kind of want to depart towards Munich. Let's go. Yes, the river barge to Munich. To hold off the barge has space for four suitcases. Oh yeah, we can bring everything and it looks like a bearable option. Let's go, choo-choo! 
Why do I always say choo-choo even though we've traveled by three different things now? Like, even when we went by car, I was like choo-choo. Or did I go room room? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure a boat doesn't go choo-choo. We boarded a small barge docked by the canal side. Monsieur Fogg appeared skeptical. Our goal, he reminded me, is to cir circumnavigate the entire globe in less than three months. This boat to me looks capable of less than walking speed. Hmm. Fuck, I didn't think about that. Like, I've been really busy with exploring that I didn't actually think of. I mean, once your fog wants to go the fastest way possible, I kinda. I mean, sure, I do share, share that same goal with him, but I want on the way there. I just wanna navigate and just explore a bit as well, right? Because otherwise it just, yeah, I've been to uh, Amsterdam, what did you do there? Yeah, I just spent the night and then I went all the way to Munich again. Like, you want to tell all the amazing stories, I went to Amsterdam, I, I saw the tulips with my own pair of eyes, you wouldn't believe it. Um, d -d 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 perhaps he was right, I waved the boat away, no, 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 I assured him we would make swift progress. Though I was not sure how I would, uh, would arrange it. Very good, he replied. Accepting my word on the matter, the rope was released and we took off from the bank and began, very slowly, to pace our way down the river. Okay, that is really slowly, god damn it. <laughs> Let's converse. Greetings, Geert. Geert. Such a typical name. Good day there. I am the pilot. Yes. Right. Let's ask about uh, Munich to Vienna. It says in my timetable that one can travel from Munich to Vienna. You mentioned cars. I've been uh, told one can travel in the car fleet from Winnipeg to Uvijivik. Where the hell is Uvijivik? Uvijivik. And then from Vienna to what is Uvijivik? What else do you know about Uvijivik? You might be interested that there is no market in Uvijuvik. Well, look at all the options. Um, Quebec, Quebec City? Isn't that in in Canada? So Uvi and then there's Reykjavik here, which is in Iceland. Is it possible to go to uh, from Uvijuvik to Reykjavik? Here's the thing I can tell you. The only market in Reykjavik has gone bankrupt. Uh, that's one thing to consider as well. Winnipeg to Winnisk? Where is this exactly? The river barge. Oh god. This is taking a long time considering the car was even faster than this god dang boat. There must, my faster re uh, master reflected thoughtfully be some way to make this barge move a little faster. It is powered after all. Indeed, there is a boiler and a paddle. Hmm. He nodded. See to it. I opened my mouth and closed it again. And if it cannot be done, or please monsieur, I cannot achieve miracles. You know what? I promised him that I said that this will be fast and I extremely underestimated him so I don't really want to disappoint him because he is my master after all, right? So, I open my mouth and close it again. There was no use arguing with him. I left the cabin and went up on deck. It was certainly true that we were crawling. We had left the canal and joined the Rhine and working against the current, the boat seeming to seemingly to move barely at all. I took myself to the front of the boat and did nothing. I went to look at the boiler. I'm no mechanic, but you know, sometimes just tapping it with like a, a wrench does the job so let's try that first I went to look at the boiler but it seemed to me a most simple affair coal in steam out and only so much coal would fit uh, I went to the prow to consider the matter I went to talk to the barge pilot let's talk to the pilot first while revealing my purpose might make her uncomfortable it was possible she knew a way to achieve my master's goal um, what's the fastest this boat can go about this fast, she replied. <laughs> you can do a little more if you shut the flue on the boiler and keep the steam in. Then we must do that. I slunk away to try it. Do, 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 do. Finding the flue in the boiler room easily enough. It, it took just a moment to flip shut. Oh, I paused. Oh, let's try it. The response from the engine 
was immediate. It began to roar inside with a deep, throaty sound, and the boat began to plume through the water. My master would be most pleased. Your relationship with Fog has improved slightly. That's an interesting thing as well, right? Like, sh sure he's our master, but to have a good relationship with your master is a good thing as well. So, that's a good aspect that based on what you do or try to you know i mean sure he gives you command but sometimes you either can fulfill the task or not or try your hardest to fulfill it and whatnot so that obviously has an impact on your relationship with your master oh yeah going fast already we're at day six though bam day six 10 p.m i woke to find we have made excellent progress overnight Monsieur Fogg was overjoyed. He tried his own cravat, even combined his own moustaches. Moustache. Munich by this evening, he remarked. A very good outcome. I could not help but bask in his pride. Indeed, Monsieur, let's be humble. I answered demurely, content in my knowledge of a job well done. It was that moment, of course, that the boiler decided to overheat. No way. The stovepipe blew off the back of the boat and we slowed to a full halt. To say my master's mood sank, I raised above to see to the problem. Let's go to that first. But it was clear there was no easy solution. The barge pilot was scratching her head with an adjustable spanner. I can't see how it happened, she sighed. I had tuned uh, the engine just right. Uh, sure, air pressure, that's gotta be it. Air pressure, no doubt, I uh, replied vaguely. Perhaps so, the woman replied, but she did not seem much happier. She set about fixing her engine while we idled in the water. It was not until the evening that the barge began to move once more. Relations with Fog have deteriorated slightly, uh oh. So the good that we have done basically was undone. So that this helped nothing at all, except make our master happy for a little while and then disappointed now. So we basically changed this mood from happy into disappointed rather than being slightly disappointed the entire way through. And this time we traveled in like slow paced burst and then we stand still for quite a long time and then we're going to go in the snail pace again. But your character is now polished. Alright. Hopefully we reach it. Oh, come on. Let's go to Munich. The barge moved across the steady waters. Not too fast and not too slowly. There was nothing else for us to do, so Monsieur Fogg with, uh, involved himself with the newspaper, and I passed the time by studying different ways to fold linen, the peril of passers-by. So this is sort of a choice that you're choosing as well, like the peril of passers-by. Like, sh I mean, both of them are in a way to help uh, Fogg as well, I guess. But the other one is sort of. I guess you can consider it a selfish way as well because you yourself or at least I personally like to explore a lot and talk to a lot of strangers and whatnot and Fog is like come on passe partout quickly quickly hurry up and I'll be like yeah I'll be I'm just talking here so you know what because he is slightly disappointed now I'll, I'll just find and discover an amazing new way to fold his linen and I'll be like oh my suit is amazingly soft and no creases in it whatsoever. Job well done, passe partout. Different ways to fold linen in an attempt to shrink our luggage down. Okay, so that's another way, a uh, useful way. Even if I could not make it lighter. So it, that would make us fit in more stuff, I think. Come on, almost at Munich. I want to sell that Rembrandt uh, thingy for 7,000. It was just a sketch. We moored at a dock close to Munich and closed uh, the remaining miles in the back of a Bozek car, a design much the same as the boat, but on wheels. Still, uh, at least it, I was not responsible for its slowness, moving at 40 miles an hour. Yeah, at least I was not responsible for that. We arrived in Munich just as night was falling. Holy crap, we finally made it. The last Rembrandt could earn us well here. Exactly. Let's go to the market. And can we actually sell? How do we sell something? At the bank? Like, I really want to sell it. Can we sell it here? Yes. 
BAM! 10,000! The tra train timetable. Can this actually fit in here? Okay, awesome. They have apples as well. Magnifying glass. A smooth surface lens set into... It's valuable in Dubrovnik, Venice, and Budapest. Apples. You, you can go around the whole world, but nothing surpasses a decent apple. Of interest to official, earnest, and soldier types. Ooh. It's one... Sure, let's buy another apple. A busy place almost tediously. Why? Alright. So we found a route... More routes to Warsaw, Budapest to Belgrade, and dang, Athens. I kind of want to freaking go to Athens as well. We're at day 8 and we're only at Munich. This seems like we're not progressing that far, but we're doing fine. Alright, it's almost 8 p.m. So let's try and figure out a plan. Um... So, are we still gonna go with the plan of North Korea? This is, that's Japan, I think, right? Wait, isn't? No, Pyongyang. I'm pretty sure that's North Korea. Yeah, this is the Philippines. Hell yeah, this is Japan, alright. So, I wanna go to Pyongyang. So, that means we would have to go to Beijing. We'd have to go to... Then we eventually have to go to M Moscow, though. So we're gonna have to... The, the Trans-Siberian Railway, I think, is what we're gonna have to take. I, I think the best thing to do is to go to Warsaw. You know what? We're gonna sleep for tonight because obviously nothing leaves at night, or at least not at least not much. So we'll pass the night here. The Franco-Prussian War had concluded but a year ago. Thus my French accent was at a disadvantage. Thus I flaunted my French accent. Should we hide our French accent? It might be best. Um thus I flaunted my French Wait, flaunted? Oh fuck! That's actually not good. Flaunting is showing off, right? God damn it. Thus, I flaunted my French accent here in the Victor City. I had no interest in coddling under other sensibilities. That is, until the concierge in our hotel quite deliberately dropped a mug of coffee into my lap. Quite a sensitive moment for poor Passepartout. I took the man to task. I endured the insult with dignity and made sure to spill a glass of Merlot on his shirt. <laughs> Payback, bitch! Oh yeah, the man stiffened but did not criticize my clumsiness, returning a moment later in fresh whites and carrying a new glass, which somehow <laughs> I contrived to splash in my face. I admitted defeat. I mo in mopping myself, accidentally pushed my steak knife. What? That takes it a bit too far. You know, that's, that's the, like that one guy where, you, where you're like joking about something really silly and everybody else piles on and there's always that one guy that takes the joke way, way too far and you're like, whoa dude, okay, where the fuck did that, that come from? And this is kind of seems like I love we're just splashing water. I mean, sure, it's sort of purposely knocking drinks over and stuff, but... Pushing a steak knife into the man's arm, that goes a bit too far, but you know what? I'm a petty French man and I do not surrender. Actually, this is this is perfectly this is so stereotypical correct that I actually just have to do it. I have to admit defeat. The French always surrender. I'm sorry if there are any French people here, but that's just how it goes, so I have to admit defeat. And let the matter slide. And saw Monsieur Fogg relax visibly as I disengage from the conflict. Relations with Fog have improved slightly, and your character is now presentable. Right, so um, before we depart, I'm actually going to explore. So that's going to take about four hours. There was little daylight in Munich. The sky was shrouded in steam and oil fumes from the tractors and hydraulic excavators in the street. Uh, workers shouted to each other, places of industry then, and quickly returned to the safety of, my, of a cafe. Uh, let's just listen to the workers shouting. Yavol shouted to each other over the din of construction, while the more fastidious citizens wore dark clothes over their finery. 
I brushed a few specks of dirt from my collar. In horror, truly, technological marvels aside, this was a very height of barbarism. A man's last pr pristine white shirt was sacred. Exactly, white. You have to, uh, it's so precious. You have to treasure it. Rumor had it that this work was the doing of the Bavarian king, Bavarian king, who had become obsessed with steam power, uh, but the spectacle was more interesting to me than the patronage. Um, what does it matter who makes the machines when the machines themselves are so wondrous? Must we look for the creator's hand behind every gleaming marvel? I shared the thought with uh, Monsieur Fogg. Let's see what he thinks about the matter. Who raised an eyebrow, all machines eventually go wrong, and then it is imperative that we know how to fix them. I felt altogether chastened. I'm not sure I'm entirely suited to the business of being a valet. Uh-oh. Your character is now polished. Um, let's try and depart. Where shall we go towards? So there's a... Is this someone else moving? That's someone else moving. NB Mbaya. He's moving from Munich to Venice. I really want to go to Warsaw. It leaves on Saturday? How about I go to Berlin? Let's go to Berlin. It's gonna take minus 9 health with a attractive like chick steam carriage. Holy crap, that's gonna cost us a lot. But you know what? We're gonna do that in the very next video. Are we gonna do it now? Fuck it, let's do it now before we end the video. Um, Tevit kicks steam carriage to Berlin. The luggage rack has yeah, 2 out of 4, uncomfortable conditions and the open road. This promises to be a bothersome journey, but the partial English wardrobe should make things easier. seems like such a bumpy road. We crossed from Munich to Berlin in a patched up steam carriage. The smoke pumped out of the back through a tall iron chimney, leaving a soot smugged wake which trailed behind us like a flag. Our driver Christoph could not stop talking about his father. Uh, the countryside was a very definition of bu bucolic. Ah, Christoph, who was an engine driver and had just been promoted. The Kaiser! has merged all the state railways into the Reich Railway, he told us proudly. We have the most efficient system in all of Europe. Then why the hell am I taking this uh, thing? It sounds like an excellent option. I glanced at Monsieur Fogg, who brightened, appreci who brightened appreciably at Christoph's word. He was not usually one to appreciate the achievements of foreigners, but no doubt efficient railways were an exception to his rule. Alright, so that's good. So then we know that in... I'm assuming in Berlin they have a good railway. So let's converse. Aha, greetings Christoph. Don't worry, you won't distract me from the road. Good, alright. Let's talk about... Uh, from Berlin to Warsaw, I really want to go there. Mm, you ha if we have a timetable for routes from Berlin to Warsaw. Uh, you mentioned trains. I've been told I knew a woman who was on holiday in... Saritsin, not before the freight train to Moscow went missing. There actually went the train missing. And then from Warsaw to, I think, Minsk? Or Prague. Let's go to Prague. Can you travel from Warsaw to Prague? There's something I do know. The clock in the town square is a piece of junk. But now listen, do you like trains? <laughs> Am I fucking Sheldon? Oh, okay, I like trains. Indeed I do. They are <clears throat> comfortable. So do I. I do not mind driving, but a train would be better. Let's ask him more about uh, Warsaw. Do tell me more about M Warsaw. Uh, did you know Minsk can be reached from Warsaw ab aboard the Belarus Express? Ooh, interesting. Apples? An apple, Christoph? Most generous. Oh yeah, we're making friends. We gave him an apple. Alright, what more shall we ask? Perhaps about... I guess Moscow? Sure, why not? The capital of the... Russian Republic. What more can you tell me about Moscow? The Tsar has formed his own secret police, I heard. Um, 
I think Omsk is the, the way that we kind of want to go towards. So we're going to go from Moscow to Omsk. I'm told you can reach Omsk from Moscow. Uh, not just that, but traders in Pyongyang, yes, will pay fantastic amounts for emeralds from Omsk. Oh my god, this is the perfect situation from us, from Omsk. We're going to from Omsk and buy emeralds there and sell it in Pyongyang. Hell yeah. Uh, let's talk about Ir Irkutsk again. Oh, no, Pyongyang. What more can you tell me about Pyongyang? Can I just say, you can pick up magnifying glasses in Pyongyang and you can sell for profit in Singapore. Oh, and then I kind of, oh, Manila. Hell yeah, let's ask about the Philippines. Is it possible to go from Pyongyang to Manila? This guy knows a lot. Uh, yes, you can get to Manila from Pyongyang aboard the steam yacht. Quiet thunder, but the fare is expensive. That's fine. New routes discovered, so Warsaw all the way to Moscow. And then Moscow will go to Tsitsirin, Ashtarakan, and Manila to Pyongyang, which is somewhere over there. Up, yes, there it is. Bam. Discovering all the routes. Almost at Berlin. We were on the outskirts of Berlin when a shadow fell over the steam carriage. Christoph blanched and crossed himself, taking his hands from the wheel. I looked up, not knowing what to expect. Probably rain, yeah. Uh, what to expect, but the sight that greeted me almost defied description. An Ottoman gay class airship hung directly above the steam carriage, low enough that I could see uh, a black pirate flag waving? A black pirate flag waving proudly from the stern of the gondola and the name Canavar uh, picked out in the gilt letters on the prow. We were under attack! What? Two mechanical claws were dropped off the side of the gondola. Their pincers gleamed threateningly. What? I tried to throw myself on the note. Drive, Kristoff! I shouted urgently, but with our suitcases on the roof, there was no way to achieve enough acceleration. Um, I twisted around to see the arm oh god oh uh, do we throw overboard a suitcase i mean we we have two suitcases one with apple apples and like the english clothing and the other ones are actually with useful pieces of paper that gives us routing information given all you have man shouting does not improve a mechanism christoph cried back and he was right, our shouting achieved nothing, and a moment later, the aerial claw had us. Then we were hoisted upwards. Are you kidding me? He got me? Christoph's prayers grew louder and more desperate, but Monsieur Fogg merely looked out of the window as we were hauled up onto the deck of the pirate ship. We have been abducted, Monsieur! Perhaps we can turn this to our advantage? How? How? I suggested to the master in hushed tones. These pirates have an airship. He glanced at me with cool approval. We are on the same mind, passe partout, he said. Two muscular crew members pulled us out of the carriage and onto the deck as the red jacketed woman climbed over the side nimbly. She examined us with dark eyed intensity before breaking into laughter. An Englishman, a Frenchman, and a Bavarian. <laughs> it sounds like the beginning of a terrible joke. Why have you abducted us? I am Behia bin Kazim, and this is my ship, the Canavar. I have little interest in your pa in you passengers. All I want is part from your steam carriage engine. Really? An engine part? Then what will you do with us? Captain Kazim's smile spread across her face like an unsheed an unshedding blade. Hmm. What should I do with you? She asked into the air, stroking her chin in a theatr uh, theatrical villainy way. Uh, take us to our destination? Perhaps tea? Such an English thing to say, <laughs> I suggested. It was quite a parching business being abducted. The crew fell about in laughter as Captain Kazim shook her head. Really? You are too precious. I decided to charm the captain into helping us. To help with the scavenging, no, let's charm. We we're we're a charmer, you know. That's how we're gonna. We're we're always charming the ladies, so we might as well. Why are, why should we stop now? If it ain't broken, don't fix it. 
Surely she would appreciate the spirit of adventure. Um, she uh, of adventure which had driven our wager. A wager, you say? Her hand slipped into her pocket. I have something that needs to be delivered to the artificer of Suleimani in Istanbul. Will you be going in that direction? Um. Oh, sure, of course. Why not? Or let, let's inquire about it first. What business do you have with an artificer? I asked in surprise. None of your concern, was her trenchant reply. Well, are you going to Istanbul? We may well pass that way. Maybe, I replied cagily. Captain Kazim seemed to weigh me up for a moment and then handed me a small carved bead of bright lapis lazuli, closing my fingers over the treasure. Take this to him. It is important. She sucked in a breath. He will reward you handsomely. I am quite sure. Well, I have 10,000 pounds. Um, and what do you receive in return? I asked, rather cynically. What does it matter? Captain Chasm smiled strangely and added, Forgiveness, perhaps, if there is such a thing. What could an airship pirate and the famed artificer of Suleimani possibly have in common? The rest of the journey was conducted, uh, I spent in interrogation, discovering that merchants in Moscow will pay fantastic amounts for absent from Budapest. Finally, the Canavar dropped us off at a short distance outside Berlin. Having us fur uh, having no further use for us, Christoph lamented over the scavenged remains of a steam carriage. My father is going to be very angry. He sighed. A thoroughly congenial abduction, a rather inconvenient method of travel. Ah, but it was fun though. It wasn't, you know, it was a good abduction, not a bad one. A rather in a da -da, by pirates, yeah, being abducted by pirates. Still, we had lost hardly any time at all. That's the thing, like, we don't care about the car, it wasn't our car, the only thing that's basically valuable to us is time. Yeah, and money and that sort of stuff as well, but those are means of buying us more time in a sense. Or not necessarily buying us more time, but th those are means of trying to spend the least time traveling, I guess that's the best way of putting it. My fingers closed over the, over the lapis eye in my pocket. How could I convince my master to journey to Istanbul? The lapis eye should fetch a good price in Moscow if we don't find a use for it. Oh yeah, we arrived in Berlin, but we're gonna end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more, and I will see you in the very next video. Peace!